Lately I've been thinking a lot about a classic video game series known as Jack and Daxter. It's easily my favorite game series of all time. I expressed my distaste at the notion of that scrapped reboot a while back, as I think that's just a bad idea. I mean, the same people who made the original game want to make it again, despite the original trilogy leaving plenty of room open for more sequels? Does this mean that the original storyline would be discontinued? We would lose all hope of finding out what happens next. So. While I was brooding over whether or not there would be a continuation to the series, I came to the realization that this month is actually the 10th anniversary of the PlayStation Portable game, Daxter. I think I may be the only person who realizes this. That's a real shame, because it's a great game. Daxter was released on March 14th, 2006 in North America. It serves as a prequel slash sequel to Jack 2, in which Daxter has to rescue Jack from prison, as everyone originally kind of assumed he just did because... he's Daxter? The game is set just before Jack 2, in which Jack and Daxter have been flung into a dystopian city known as Haven. City. If you want to know how this happens, well, you'll just have to play Jack 2. It isn't even brought up in Daxter. It just kind of shows up. No one questions it. Does that mean I don't have to explain what happens in the other games? I really don't feel like it. Anyway, the real playing order for Daxter would be just after Jack 2, as the game ends with Daxter narrating the story at some point between Jack 2 and 3, even though the game began being narrated by Samos. How exactly does that work? Also, would Samos be narrating the story after Jack X Combat Racing? Okay, just play the game whenever you want, it doesn't matter. I was introduced to the Jack and Daxter series in an unusual way, as in, one of my friends was playing Daxter on his PSP, so I decided to get my own PSP, as well as Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron, which means that Darth Vader's helmet is shown on the back. I lost Renegade Squadron at some point, but I never lost Daxter. I wouldn't dare lose a Jack and Daxter game. Except for Jack 3, which I let my friend borrow after his copy got broken or something by his younger brother. Actually, looking back, that was probably a very poor decision. Whether or not his younger brother smashed my copy, I'll never know because we lost contact. The real tragedy is that the game came with a pretty cool manual, which you don't really see anymore. So I got Daxter for my PSP, and I loved it. Although it is kind of strange that I never questioned where Daxter himself came from. Because Daxter was my introduction to the series, I have concluded that Daxter works as an introduction to the series. However, there is one big twist from Jack 2 that is given away. Daxter is the first game in the series that wasn't made by Naughty Dog. Despite this, the game still manages to capture the feel of Jack and Daxter. It is a more lighthearted tone than Jack 2, 3, and 10, with fewer character deaths and less torture, and has a nice blend between the tones of Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy and the following games. Visually, it's a little different, but the character of Daxter is done justice. However, I really would have liked to know what he thought of the whole flung into a massive dystopian city situation. The opening cutscene is a time skip of almost two years. What exactly was Daxter doing in this time? How did he end up in the bar? How did he survive? Did he just eat trash or what? It's not really important to the main plot, but it would have been nice to have a few of those details filled in. Even though this particular backstory isn't explained, there is still a fair amount of backstory that gets filled in, such as how Daxter infiltrates the prison at the opening of Jack 2. Ready at Dawn clearly did their research, as everything feels like it could easily fit into the universe of the other games. There are also some neat touches, such as how Daxter has a dream where he fights the old farmer from the first game. In the opening cutscene, Daxter talks about facing off against a group of lurkers, as he doesn't yet know that they are not considered a threat to Haven City. However, there are a few inconsistencies. For example, why is Daxter so nonchalant about fighting a giant metal bug, which is pretty much just a metalhead at that point? Yet in Jack 2, he freaks out when he sees a creature half its size. If he hates bugs, then why did he ask Jack for the insect collection in one of the death screens in the first game? Was it because of the spider cave, or were there just bugs in the trash you had to eat? The story here is a lot more straightforward than in the other Jack games, as in, it has no plot twists. That's almost blasphemy. Nevertheless, the story is strong and does the job well. Samos opening the story was a great way to tie it in with the rest of the series. The first two Jack games also began with this narration, but for some reason it stopped after that. 
The enemies here are pretty good. Metal bugs were a great way to reintroduce the metalheads without making Daxter seem as overpowered as he was in Jack 3. And this also allows for a lot of completely new designs with a lot of variation. Daxter's mission is to exterminate as many of these bugs as possible in order to... not have to eat trash? At the beginning of the game, you're not really sure where the story is going, as Daxter just does some random tasks for random people. Just when it feels like things are about to get repetitive, the main plot quite literally bursts back on screen. From this point on, the story really gets going. There's some setup and foreshadowing for the events of Jack 2, and Daxter starts to develop more as a character, which makes you look at him in a very different way in the other games. The characters aren't as in-depth as those in the rest of the series, but they're all likable for the most part. The cast is small, but this is a good thing. This helps make Haven City feel like a very big place, as the game focuses on a small group of people in a small section of the city. Osmo is the somewhat senile, old mentor type. Zyman is a surfer stereotype, and Terran... Actually, who exactly is Terran? She just kinda shows up with no explanation. Why does she want to exterminate the metal bugs? What's her story? Does she work for the underground, or does she get money from collecting skull gems? Maybe she's actually a metal bug. Daxter also gets his very own sidekick in this game, known as Tick. Even though he considered Jack to be the sidekick. Oh, I get it. Like a sidekick. Tick is some sort of bug that Daxter finds about halfway through the game. Tick is used to unlock a door in this fun little minigame, and then... Tick just kinda disappears for most of the game. He doesn't come back until the penultimate mission. I'm honestly surprised there weren't more minigames about unlocking doors. Imagine all the possibilities. The villain, Caden, is good, but he doesn't have a whole lot of depth. He's just the muscle for the main villain in Jack 2. He may not be the most memorable villain, but he still serves his purpose and does some things near the end of the game that make it all the more satisfying to face off against him. There are also some neat cameos from some familiar characters scattered throughout the game, which provide a little more backstory. The Jack and Daxter series is somewhat well known for its excellent soundtracks. This game is no exception. The tone of the game is almost completely dependent on what kind of music is being played in the background, and most of the tracks are memorable. They really help to make the game feel a whole lot more epic, and they're very underrated. The sound is pretty good considering it's just a PSB game. The audio flows together very well, but I don't think there's a single person out there who cares about what else I have to say about it. Now I'm going to show you myself playing the game for the first time in a few years. I recorded this about a month ago. Okay, so this is my first time playing Daxter in a very long time. And I haven't used my PlayStation Portable in a while, but it doesn't work as well as it used to. One of the buttons is kind of broken. But let's just try it out and see how it works. Okay, so evidently my PlayStation Portable is not working because it, I, I guess the battery isn't what it used to be. I charged it pretty recently and it's not working, so. Okay, I got the charger plugged in. This brings back some painful memories of playing my games when I'm charging them. Uh, are these bite marks on the charger? Huh. My cat comes up to me whenever I record these videos, whenever I speak, he's just here. Sorry for the terrible quality on the camera, uh, I have no excuse. The, the logo come yeah, yeah, look at that. No, I don't want to set the time and date. It does this every time. Okay, I'm I'm playing the Daxter. Play play the Daxter. Ready at dawn. That's a pretty good company. I've only ever played one game by them. Yeah, look at it. it it's back after five years. The last time I I, I played it. Five years? Does that mean the last time I played this was on the fifth anniversary? Oh, that hurts my head. What? No. That is so weird to think about. Oh, oh, wait a second. It wasn't five years ago. The last time I played this was 2012. Okay, here it is. The moment of truth. My first time playing in four or five years. Here we go. I'm getting this all on film. Oh! Oh! Looks like I never left. Yes, indeed. Well, that about wraps up today's gaming episode. I think I got pretty far. But I did it all with the help of you guys. You know, so, so thanks. Looks like we did it. 
Goodbye. The gameplay still holds up well and feels very smooth. I had a lot of fun playing through the game once again, and I had a hard time putting it down to work on this video. Some of the controls are very similar to the other Jack games, but the moves are completely different. Instead of using his fists like Jack, Daxter has an electric bug swatter. He also has a bug spray gun used to paralyze enemies. Throughout the game there are many upgrades added on, like the ability to fly and a flamethrower, which help to keep the dynamic fresh. Visually, these tools add a lot of variation, and the gameplay feels unique to the series. The levels in Daxt are mostly based around average locations you would find in a city, such as a brewery and a distillery. Wait, what? But there are plenty of places to go outside the walls. These locations help to expand the universe of Jack and Daxter, and make Haven City feel like a real city. That one guy you stole a zoomer from in Jack 2? He could be a worker in the transit system. Strange how that was never mentioned before. That one fat bloke you punched? He could have a job at the lumber mill, and could have an entire family to feed. These levels are fun, and while some of them are very linear, others allow you to explore large locations, which helps to change things up. The game gets more and more difficult as it goes on, and doesn't really have any difficulty spikes like in Jack 2. Different types of enemies get introduced as the game goes on, and they all require different moves to defeat. Most of these levels involve clearing out metal bugs in various locations, but there are a few missions that involve completing a certain number of tasks, such as finding dark eco-crystals. There are also a few segments involving vehicles. These vehicles handle well, and they never get boring, as they only show up every couple of missions. Unless you count this scooter thing, which is mainly used to get around the city quickly. Although it can get frustrating when you find the vehicle is very far away, and you have to walk all the way back to it. If you have 100% completion in Jack X, then you can upgrade this scooter. This was a nice little addition. For the first time in Jack and Daxter history, we get a glimpse into Daxter's inner mind, in the form of dream sequence minigames. These dreams parody various films such as The Matrix and Lord of the Rings, which both appear twice for some reason. These minigames are fun to do on the side, and you can unlock a couple of new moves and such by completing them. You want to know the reason why Precursor Orbs are so rare in Jack 2? It's because Daxter collected a thousand of them. Actually, now that I think about it, what did Jack and Daxter use these for in between games anyway? Never mind. The point is that the collecting here is a lot more like the collecting in the first game than in the following ones. Precursor orbs are scattered throughout each level, and they can be used to unlock dream minigames as well as some behind the scenes videos. These videos are short, and you may find yourself wondering why you collected every single orb, to unlock that amazing combat bug in Osmo's shop of course, but it's still cool to see the game in production. I also really want to play some of those levels that were never in the game. Just like in Jack 2 and 3, metalheads slash bugs drop collectible skull gems. There are a few missions throughout the game where a certain number of gems need to be collected, but they don't really serve a purpose in the other levels. I'm not even sure if you need to collect them to get 100% completion. There's nothing stopping you from just ignoring the bugs. This would be good for doing a speed run, but I just wish that there was something else that could be done with them. Finally, there are these somewhat creepy masks that are scattered throughout a few levels. You can collect them, if you want. Originally I tried to get 100% completion before reviewing the game, but I ran into a nasty glitch in which I wasn't able to exit a level I was revisiting to find collectibles. This meant that I had to start the entire game over and just do a speedrun. These kinds of things seem to happen a lot on the PSP. I looked this glitch up, and it seems I'm not the only one this has happened to. I would recommend not saving after you return to the fish cannery until you are out, or not returning until you have unlocked the level select by beating the game. Luckily, I already have 101% on a different save file so I'm still able to go over the remaining extras. You can also unlock some website clues, but good luck finding the website. You see, there used to be this site called The Daxter Show, but all that comes up when I try to find it is the Daxter TV series. Eventually I found a link on a discussion page on the Jack and Daxter wiki. Don't ask how. At first glance, the site looks the same, but then I realized that there were a few things missing. Was it ever called The Daxter Show? I'm pretty sure there was this ladybug that you could kill at the top of the screen, as well as some other cool minigames. I wish this vault thing would stop rattling. It's very annoying. Anyway, I'll show you what the clues do. You can unlock stuff like these videos. Well, you can download stuff involving Jack X. Oh. The site has these links that you can use. How the mighty have fallen. The game also features a game mode in which you use combat bugs, which you can find in cages scattered throughout the game, to fight other combat bugs. You can battle against the computer or your friends, but I've only ever used the single player mode, as none of my friends have the game. Well, besides that one guy who inspired me to get the game in the first place. We tried, but couldn't get it to work. I haven't seen him in years. This is a very different game mode than anything found in the rest of the Jack series, and it features a system similar to Pokemon. You choose an attack, add some upgrades, and repeat. Kinda like rock, paper, scissors. I was never a huge fan of these types of games, and I've only ever played this mode a few times. 
It's still fun, but I would much rather play the main game. Nevertheless, it's cool to have this game mode to change things up. Daxter still holds up as my favorite game on the PSP. The game runs at a good length, but it won't take too long to complete all of the side missions, likely due to the limitations of early PSP games, but this just provides more motivation for achieving 100% completion. So, the Jack and Daxter series hasn't had many installments since Daxter. The Lost Frontier did come out three years later, but other than that, there hasn't been much. Jack and Daxter have been featured in some other titles, such as PlayStation All-Stars, but there hasn't been any real continuation of the storyline. Also, is it just me, or does Daxter seem like he could be one of the most potentially marketable video game characters ever? Whoever made PlayStation Move Heroes realized this, so why haven't there been more games? Daxter only proved that there is still life in the franchise past the original trilogy. I'm sure we'll see the characters return in some form in the near future, but I would really like to see another big game from the franchise. Who knows, maybe something will be announced for the 15th anniversary of the series this year. Only time will tell. Okay, move along, old man. You had me at hello, but you had to push it.